professional wrestling existed before the 1920s and, and existed all over the place in a lot of different styles. But it was the 1920s that gave us professional wrestling kind of as we know it today. Because in the, in the early 1920s, a wrestler named Ed Strangler Lewis, along with his manager, not like Bobby the Brain Heenan, but the person who was actually managing him, uh, Billy Sandow, those two combined forces with a wrestler slash creative genius named Toots Mond. And the three of them created what became known as the Goldust Trio. And the Goldust Trio came together. And they presented, and more importantly, I believe, organized professional wrestling in a way that it had never been organized or presented before. They looked at the fact that wrestling was waning in popularity because of how long some of these matches that were more the catch-as-catch-can style were taking. The, 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 uh, what once was kind of a hot ticket was losing steam quickly. And while to some extent wrestling had always been fixed, it was the Goldust Trio that said, let's throw it all out the window and let's give people something that's worth buying a ticket to. Let's give them a guarantee. And how do we guarantee it? Well, we take full control over not just who wins and loses, but the entire structure of the match, the outcome. And we think about why. Toots Mont is really credited as being the guy who created the concept of the finish. All wrestling matches ended, of course. But the idea that you would think of a finish, what's the finish in this match? Okay, we'll do this, we'll do that, and what's the finish? We as wrestling fans kind of take for granted that that's always just been there. But it was Toots that came up with the idea of, well, this is what the finish will be, whether it was a, a submission, a pin, the reason we'll do it, it'll lead to this, the storytelling of it. It wasn't just the end of a match. It was a part of storytelling. And that hadn't really been done before the Gold Dust Trio. You know, Toots was the one who would usher in referee bumps, who would usher in time limit draws, who would make it so a match would end in a way that would cause people to come back for the rematch. Or that would, we'd have wrestlers that would be exclusive to this territory that would not be booked for one show, but would be booked for every show. It was the first time you'd see a build. Wrestlers building up. You'd go to the shows and you'd watch a new superstar. And over the course of weeks and months, watch him rise in the rankings. You could follow that journey and feel as a fan invested when he finally got to the world title. This was the genius of Toots. This was the genius of the Gold Dust Trio, but egos get in the way of everything. And by the end of the 1920s, promoters had caught up to what they were doing and started presenting wrestling in the same way that they were, what they coined the slam bam style of professional wrestling, uh, slam bang, slam bam, something like that. And uh, uh, and a, a power struggle happened and the, and the Gold Dust Trio ended up dissolving. 